Open Source Network Operating Systems. First we're going to discuss the fundamentals of the network operating system. The network operating system is a fundamental integral part of the network. It disperses data to and from clients and ensures proper communication is facilitated. It is also available in proprietary software forms and open source. Before implementing or considering deployment of open source, consider the following factors. What does open source define? What comprises open source network operating systems? Open source must also address hardware issues, software, communication, security, and also network and internet tools. The overall goal of implementing an open source system, positive return on investment, decreased information systems expenditures. Now we're going to define what is open source software. Open source software is software that openly displays source code for individuals and organizations. Source code is available to be modified according to the needs of the individual or organization. Under the terms of the open source Companies may sell product license and support to another organization according to the GNU GPL license, that's general public license. Underlying characteristics of open source network operating systems. Much of open source network operating systems revolve around the software's kernel. The kernel is what the operating system is based and controls the functions of the system. Most open source network operating systems are influenced by Linux and Open Unix. Continuing our discussion regarding underlying characteristics of network operating systems, Unix was created by computer scientists at Historical Bell Labs in 1969. Open source version is available. The proprietary version is now owned by Novell. Linux was created by Linus Torvald in 1991, released worldwide in 1994. Many distributions of Linux are available, aka distros, such as SUSE Linux, developed by Novell, Red Hat, Ubuntu. They're all popular deviations of the operating system Linux or the kernel to be exact. Now we're going to talk about the hardware fundamentals of the open source network operating system. Not all existing hardware supports open source. Organizations must check minimum requirements of their existing hardware. Some vendors may specifically target certain operating systems best policy in this case is to ensure existing hardware supports the intended software. Now we're going to talk about the software components of a network operating system. Must ensure organizations software needs are met. Middleware allows clients consisting of multiple operating systems to access the server. You can have Mac, Linux, and Windows clients all accessing resources from an open source server. OpenOffice.org is an excellent alternative to Microsoft Office. It is provided via Oracle. The only problem with OpenOffice is the database files access from Microsoft Office. Licensors per client are less expensive than that of a Microsoft Office license. Open source operating systems also do not have a finite lifespan and are updated and patched by all in the community, computing community that wishes to participate. Now we're going to talk about the communication aspects of an open source network operating system. Since email is the backbone of all organizations, 
Zimba is an excellent open source alternative to Outlook with reasonable licenses fees for clients. Zimba also supports IMAP and POP3 email protocols. Remote access to terminals is also available for open source systems. Many third party remote access vendors also support open source. Now we're going to talk about the security concerns of open source. Open Unix and Linux users are assigned levels of permission. The administrators usually have root access in the case of these systems. Security loopholes are located and accessible by users and quickly patched. The concern here is that since the software is open that anyone can access the security loophole or in this case known loopholes can be quickly repaired. Apache SSL also utilizes open source L protocol. Now we're going to talk about the network and internet tools of open source. Centralization of information services tasks is available through open source vendors. Xenos offers applications to centralize IS management. Now we're going to continue our discussion regarding the in network internet tools. Apache offers numerous utilities for open source systems. Apache HTTP is an online server utilized by many. They also have a Java work environment named Apache Tomcat. Furthering our discussion on network and internet tools of open source systems, Oracle, the giant in databases, offers MySQL and license forms for businesses. MySQL is also extremely popular and is an alternative to using Microsoft Access in open source systems. Cloud computing implementation is also available for open source systems through vendors. Now we're going to retract the overall benefits of open source. Licenses are much less than proprietary systems. In many cases they're free or much less than the proprietary system license. Systems are generally more supported because all users participate in maintenance and security issues. Rather those that wish to participate. Systems do not have a set lifespan and the office file formats of proprietary systems are compatible with the open office suite except the access files. And this will conclude my presentation regarding open source network operating systems.